endoscopy is essential. It really is the gold standard tool for investigating the upper digestive tract and really is paramount to the diagnosis of cancers of the esophagus and stomach and precancerous lesions. Transnasal endoscopy is a form of endoscopic procedure to examine the upper digestive tract. It's a thin camera that passes through the nose and examines in detail the esophagus or food pipe, the stomach and the first part of the small bowel known as the duodenum. Historically, transnasal endoscopy was considered to be inferior to a traditional transoral endoscopy because of the ultra-thin camera and I guess the technology that's required to fit into this camera. Our experience from our transnasal endoscopy pilot here in Cardiff and Vale and also mirrored in Cumtaf Health Board has actually shown that the two are very much comparable. We looked at a number of different domains to compare transnasal endoscopy with transoral endoscopy. Firstly, we looked at the quality of images and actually we found that there was no difference at all in terms of our diagnostic yield comparing the two. We also looked at the quality of biopsies and taking a smaller scope, naturally you need to take smaller biopsies. But the feedback from our pathologist has been that all of the biopsies have been completely usable and adequate for the procedure. What we found from our pilot, and this has been mirrored in the literature published, is that transnasal endoscopy is very quick and easy to upskill in once someone has achieved full competence in traditional transoral endoscopy. Typically, people need about 10 to 15 procedures supervised before they're able to perform the transnasal endoscopy procedure independently. In terms of staffing requirements, for a transnasal procedure, we typically only need three members of staff, which is one endoscopist and a couple of nursing support staff, compared to a traditional transoral endoscopy where you require six to seven members of staff. And what was fascinating about this is that we performed this and found no difference in the quality of care delivered. And that's mainly due to the reduction of sedation required for these procedures. We also found a transnasal endoscopy procedure can be performed in a typical outpatient room, so as much space as a transoral endoscopy isn't necessarily required. During this pilot, we timed the whole patient journey from when a patient attended the endoscopy unit to the point of discharge, and we found that there was no difference at all between transnasal endoscopy and traditional transoral endoscopy. Both patient journeys lasted just under an hour. What I think was really interesting in this was that we performed those transnasal procedures with significantly less staff than the transoral procedure. And when you think about the patient journey in terms of registering at the reception desk, having some nasal spray and sedation, having their procedure and then being discharged, we found that this is probably a much more efficient way of delivering an endoscopy procedure. We've been overwhelmed by the positive feedback received during the transnasal endoscopy pilot. Nearly all of our patients found the procedure very tolerable, um, much more tolerable than a standard endoscopy. I had no problems with the traditional endoscopy, that was fine. However, this procedure was better because I was able to talk and communicate all the way through and I could answer any questions they needed. Following patient feedback, we found that 94% of patients said they would prefer a TNE if they required a further procedure. We also found two huge successes during this transnasal pilot, which I don't think we were anticipating to see. The first was a, a group of patients who have previously failed a transoral procedure, either due to underlying medical problems, which make it unsafe to perform a transoral procedure, or due to patient anxiety. We found that because a transnasal camera is so well tolerated, we managed to get almost 90% of such cases that have previously failed an endoscopy in the past through to have a traditional transnasal procedure with an excellent result. Traditional endoscopy wouldn't work because of Mike's condition. Oh. It will set him into a coughing fit and couldn't breathe, mm. uh, couldn't cope with it, very high anxiety, whereas the Make other one, the actual other one was spray up the nose a few times, both nostrils, spray mm. in the back of the throat and it went down easy, very yeah. easy. We also found a very interesting group of patients that had been diagnosed with short segment Barrett's esophagus. And we know that Barrett's esophagus typically requires regular surveillance procedures every three years. What we found was that we were able to undiagnose a group of patients with short segment Barrett's esophagus and actually show that they had an irregular Z line at the gastroesophageal junction. This basically means that in their prior procedures, these patients were perhaps retching, which gave an appearance of Barrett's esophagus. But actually these patients didn't and we were able to reassure these patients and discharge them.